Let's solve a question on adding vectors using the component method. We can see that this one is a V vector, this one is W. The magnitude of vector V is 6, magnitude of vector W is 4. And vector V is making an angle of 100 degrees from the positive X axis. W is making an angle of 40 degrees from the positive X axis. First part is to figure out V plus W and we have to show that with their I and J cap components. And the second part is to figure out the magnitude of the resultant and the angle with the positive x axis. So as always, why don't you pause this video first and try to attempt, try to attend both the parts on your own first. All right, hopefully you have given this a shot. Now let me hide the second part first. We will come to the magnitude of the resultant and the angle. But first, let's see what the what the resultant actually looks like. So let me let me hide this one for now. Let's just focus on part one. Here we need to add vector V and vector W and we will use the component method for that. So one thing that we already know is that is that let's say if we have this vector, a vector component describes the effect of this vector in that direction. So so let's say so so if we have a vector oriented like this, it can have it can have a horizontal component which which looks like this. So this blue horizontal component is showing the effect of the red vector in the horizontal direction and and this green vertical component this one is showing the effect of this red vector in the vertical direction so the component the vector components they really show the effect of the vector in that particular direction and for any angled vector vector at any angle it will have a horizontal component and a vertical component so let's say if you have some vector that looks let's say it looks like this even this one will have a horizontal component that could look somewhat like this and a vertical component, vertical component like, like this. This will be slightly longer. All right. So any angled vector will have two components and we can figure out the magnitude of these components. We know how to do that, right? We need to know two things. If we know the magnitude, if we know the magnitude and the direction of the vector, the direction of, in this case, the red vector, we can work out the magnitude of the horizontal and the vertical components. For this case, if if let's say if let's say this angle is theta, then the horizontal component, uh, if let's say the magnitude of this vector is a, then the horizontal component that would be a cos theta. The component that is adjacent to theta is the cos component. And the component that is opposite to theta, this one, this one would be a sin theta. And we can even add two angled vectors just by looking at their components. So, so let's say if we have one more vector uh, angle to this red vector and we want to add it and let's say that that blue vector looks somewhat like this. So all we need to do, all we need to do is even resolve this smaller, lighter blue vector into its vertical and horizontal components. This is how the vertical component would look like and this is how the horizontal component would look like and now we can just look at the we can just subtract the blue horizontal components and the vertical components are in the same direction so they can be added so we can find the components of the resultant vector and then using Pythagoras we can even find its magnitude so the great thing about this method is that we don't really need to know we don't really need to remember any formula or or do any graphical version of adding vectors of anything of that sort. We just need to know how to resolve vectors into their components. That's all. And using just that, we can figure out the resultant of any two vectors. So we will use this strategy. We will use the strategy of resolving vector into their components, adding their corresponding I caps and J caps, then figuring out the final magnitude and its angle with the positive X axis. Okay, now let's come back to this one. Let's look at V and W independently. Let's try and resolve them into their components and see how they look like. First, let me make this disappear. So this blue one, this blue one will have one horizontal component and that will look, that will look, let's say like this. And it will have a vertical component. I'm showing all the horizontal with this color and all the vertical components with a green color. So this is, this is its vertical component. So firstly, we are writing vector V into component form. So for that we would need, this would be a x i cap plus a y j cap. And a x is the horizontal component. So we know that the, we know that vector V makes an angle of 100 from the positive x axis. That means that this angle right here, 
this angle that would be 80 degrees 180 180 minus 100 and the component adjacent to 80 that would be 6 cos 80 because it's adjacent to theta that would be cos component so ax ax here is this right here is 6 into cos 80 degrees and the vertical component that would be 6 sin 80 degrees so this is 6 sin 80 degrees the component opposite to the angle that would be sine component so it's 6 sin 80 but there is one more thing we see that the horizontal component it's pointing in the negative x direction so there will be a negative sign over here as well because it's pointing in the negative x direction now if you work this out minus 6 cos 80 this would be minus 1.04 i cap plus 5.90 j cap so this is your vector v now let's work out vector w vector w again vector w we are resolving it into components and we want to write it in the same manner as we wrote vector v so in, in, the, in its component format so this is axi plus ayj so for vector w horizontal component can look somewhat like this slightly more and the vertical component that would be that would be that would be like this this is your vertical component so horizontal component that is 4 the magnitude of vector w 4 into cos 40 degrees because this vector is already making an angle of 40 with the positive x-axis and the component adjacent to 40 adjacent to theta is the cos component so ax this is 4 into cos 40 degrees i cap plus ay the vertical component that is 4 into sine 40 degrees j cap and when we work this out this is this is 3.06 i cap plus 2.5 j cap this is vector w and now we can add the x or the i components of both to to give us a total x component so so we can add we can add we can add this x component with this x component and we can add this j component with this j component so when we do that vector v plus vector w this is equal to minus 1.04 plus 3.06 that is just 2 i cap plus 5.90 plus 2.57 that is 8.47 j cap so v plus w this is 2 i cap plus 8.47 j cap so this was the first part and in the second part we are supposed to figure out the magnitude of the resultant vector and the angle that it makes with the positive x-axis so so let's do that we can use the pythagoras theorem to figure out the magnitude of the resultant vector because we already know its x and y component so this vector really this vector really kind of looks like this it has a horizontal x component of magnitude 2 and it has a vertical y component and the magnitude of this is 8.47 so by using pythagoras theorem 2 square plus 8.47 square root of this sum that will give us a magnitude so when we do that when we do that if we if we write the magnitude let's write that over here the magnitude that would be under root of 2 square plus 8.47 whole square and when you work this out this comes out to be equal to 8.47 the angle with the positive x-axis that would be this angle right here theta and this we know that tan theta is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side perpendicular divided by base so that is 8.47 divided by 2 that's that's really just 8.47 divided by 2 this right here is tan theta so this is 4.47 and theta theta would be tan inverse of 4.47 and when you work this out this comes out to be equal to 76 degrees so the resultant vector v plus w is making an angle of 76 with the positive x-axis now let's try and check that let's try and confirm that using the graphical method of addition using the head to tail method so so to do that let me let me make some things disappear okay shifted a couple of things as well now to add these two vectors using the graphical method we can place the tail of the second vector onto the head of the first vector in a vector the arrow the arrow is the head this is the tail so if you are adding v plus w we can place the tail of w on the head of vector v so when we do that when we do that vector w 
could look somewhat like this. We have just moved vector w without changing its direction at all. We have just placed its tail on the head of vector v. And the result in the addition of v plus w now is when you join the tail of the first vector with the head of the second vector. So that is the tail of the blue vector, this one, with the head of the second vector, this one. So when we join this, the resultant looks like this. And we can see how this resultant could be making an angle of 76 degrees with the positive x-axis. Pretty much what we got from our calculation. And also it has a very short horizontal component, 2i, makes sense. But a huge vertical component, 8.47, again makes sense. So this is how you can add two vectors using the component method. Again, the beauty of this method is that you don't really need to remember any formula. All you need to know is how to resolve a vector into its components.